Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Meet. My name is Elizabeth Ingero and today we're going to be talking about personality types. Not just talking about it, but actually looking at how we can use this information and knowledge about personality types to enable us to grow and to enable us to be able to get the best outcomes of life for ourselves and in other people. I'm really looking forward to today's conversation um, because I think knowledge is power. And one of the things that we want to do is use the knowledge that we have to, able, to enable us to be the best people that we can be in the lives that we live. But also, it can also help us to interact with other people as well in the best way that will suit that relationship and will allow us to get the most out of that relationship. So just to remind you again, if we ask a question on the chat as I'm chatting with my guest, there is a 10 second delay. So just go ahead and put your information or put your answer in the live chat box on YouTube. And then we will be able to see that and bring you into the conversation. Hopefully you will be able to enjoy the session today. And most of all, I want to be able to get from our, my guest important key information for you to take away and actually use today, as of today, in your lives and in your personal development journey. So thank you once again for tuning in. I know some of you are still outside the um, chat and the conversation watching adverts at the moment. So when you come in, just let us know where you're watching in from and we'll be able to see who's in the room. Today, my guest is Sharon Firth. Now, Sharon has been doing training and management and leadership training for years and years and years. And this is her bread and butter. This is something that she knows inside and out. And personality types is just one of the things that she covers and she trains people on and she's aware of herself. So I'm really looking forward to getting some insight from her and seeing exactly what it is that we can uh, learn from her wealth of experience and really just be able to have some key takeaways because that's what we really like here, isn't it? We, want, we don't just want to theorize and talk about things until the cows come home. We want to actually have actionable points, things that we can take away with us once we've reflected on where we are in our life situation and where we want to be and then we can then take steps forward to making that a reality. So I'm really, really excited because she's just so knowledgeable in this area, that's, that's her job training. And we'll also look at the different things that she has to offer with the company that she's built, Inspire Away. So I'm really looking forward to having her on and welcome with me, Sharon Firth. Hello, Sharon, how are you? Hello, Liz, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. Yeah. No, that's okay. There was wasn't there wasn't enough to sort of fit into that because I know as well that you're a co-pastor as well, and mm -hmm. you use your skills not just for business but for social enterprise or social um, work in that sense as well. Certainly try to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing I'd like to do is find out who you are so that our guests know the type of person that we're speaking to. So not what mm -hmm. you do, but Sharon Firth is a person who. Ah, is very practical. I'm glad you said what you did about things being needed to be actionable and put into practice because although I love to learn and I love to learn theories and the latest current trends, um, I'm the kind of person who once I've read them or, or seen the video wants to immediately go and put it into action and think how can I do that, how can I apply that. So I would, I guess I'm a doer, um, I'm an action person, I'm a practical person and I like to help other people to be that way too. Fantastic. That's really great to know. So you're the type of person that I need to go to if I'm kind of like, oh, I want to do something, but I really just can't get out of my seat and do it. Yeah. You're, the, you're the motivator. You're the one that's like, the, come on. Yes. yes. Hopefully uh, from the front rather than pushing too much from the back. But yes. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes um, as, as well, when you are working with other people, you can see things more clearly if you're not personally involved in the situation than they can themselves. So sometimes it can be helpful to have someone from outside to look at a situation and help you analyze it but problem solving as well is another one of my passions and one of the things yeah. I love to to teach in workshops because I think sometimes we don't problem solve in a very good way we just kind of mm -hmm. something happens we think what should we do and we maybe think of a couple of things and think all right we'll do that but then actually um, we haven't gone in and gathered all the information we could have about the situation mm -hmm. um, and then picked not just 
one option, but several, and then properly evaluated those options and choose the best one. So sometimes if we hold back and just um, really look into something, we can come up with a better solution than if we jump in. So I said I'm an, uh, uh, someone who loves to put things into action right away, but I have learned over the years that um, as well, you need to learn to properly research and evaluate things before you jump in. And I've probably learned that more than anything else by making mistakes or <laughs> not, things not always working out the right way. Yeah. Uh, because I think that is as well how we learn in life, isn't it? If you don't try, you'll never know. <laughs> That's true. Mistakes are a, a very good learning tool. Um, for people I'm, I'm yeah. a very I, I thank mistakes because it, <laughs> that's the only way that you can actually say well that's the way not to do it next yeah. time I can do it differently one of the most current things actually in this sort of leadership management world is the fact that we need to acknowledge our mistakes more than perhaps has been the culture to do in the past because if we carry on kind of thinking, oh, everything's okay, and letting other people think that everything we do is okay, then we can build a culture of, then there must be something really terrible about making a mistake. And people then yes. don't like to admit it or acknowledge it. And in a work environment, often they'll cover it up. So yeah. then that is much worse than if they come and tell whoever it is, you know what, I've really messed up here, so that it can be put right. Um, but if we're not careful, we can kind of build a culture where we're perfect, so everyone else around us has to be. And, um, yeah, and, and the thinking these days is much more that we all need to acknowledge that we're only human. We do make mistakes and actually we can learn from them. We can stop, we can reflect, we can think, well, what will we do differently next time? And how can we stop that happening again? And that is yes. a much more powerful learning um, than just always doing everything right, really. <laughs> Yeah, I think we might touch on that later because I know you've okay. there's some examples on that with like British Airways. I think I've heard you speak in the yeah. past about oh, yes, how yes. they've changed the culture. But well, we'll come on to that later. Okay. We'll come on to yeah. that later. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I've thought about I, that I take for a long in. time, but yes, I'll, I can. <laughs> yeah, okay. <Got> that. <laughs> so, um, when t with regards to personality types and and tests, there are quite a few out there, and Hundreds. there are quite a few var yeah varieties of personality yes. tests. I'm a this, yes. and they're like you know activist and Myers Briggs, and yeah. there are just so many out there. Can you just tell me from your experience, then, what's the purpose of these tests? Okay, so I would say that most, more than anything else, they help you to understand yourself better. One of the most important things going on in the sort of learning world today is the concept of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that has been um, mostly popularized by somebody called Daniel Goleman. I can put that name in the chat or uh, you can, it's G-O-L-E-M-A-N, Daniel Goleman. And he talks about emotional intelligence, first of all, being self-awareness. So first of all, we're aware of ourselves. And we're aware of, say, say we get really frustrated with somebody. Once we can learn enough about ourselves to be aware, okay, so why am I feeling like this now? Is it because I'm dredging up stuff from the past history with that person? Or is it because I've had a really bad day so far and that was just the final straw? Or whatever it is. But once we can be aware of why we're feeling the way we are, then we can manage ourselves. And that's the second part of it. Right. And when we can manage ourselves, we're in a position to be aware of other people and have empathy because then we're in control of our own emotions and then we're able to have empathy with other people. And then that helps us with relationship management. That's the fourth part of it. But personality tests and understanding both our personalities and others really fits into that. Because if we understand, for instance, and there are so many, as you said, so you mentioned mm -hmm. activists and theorists, that's the Honey and Mumford test. That yes, is a very popular right. one and easy to find online if you want to have a go at trying that. And that really uh, splits into four different things. So activists, which I, I, I admit I'm an activist, so people who jump in, have a go. <laughs> if it works fine, if it doesn't, well, I've learned from it, no problem. Um, theorists I'm actually very high on that one too myself which is I like to know the why and understand the theory behind things um, reflectors who are the people who have a hard time making an effort to do anything because they think and think and think and think and think and think themselves out of things a lot of the time or they're thinking they want it to be absolutely perfect before they'll even try so they maybe uh, don't want to have a go and then there are pragmatists 
who are those people who think, well, I don't want to learn it unless I can put it into practice. So that's a, a fairly simple personality test just with four different types. And, and so that's a useful one to do. Useful for yourself, because if you know how you work, then that can help you to manage yourself. Yes. But it's also useful. Um, about other people because you can have uh, people who are diametrically opposite to you so say for an activist that would be a reflector Reflector. and that can be very frustrating and so understanding that not everybody thinks the same way we do can Mm. really help us so okay so I understand them and I try to learn my management to manage my feelings around it if that person is going to take forever to make up their mind about that thing that I made up my mind about in 10 seconds um, you know then hopefully I can manage my relationship with them better yes Uh, and so so that's Honey and Mumford then if you're on a team there's something called Belvin which helps Mm. you to see what role you play on a team Uh, And that can be really interesting as well. So some people like to be leaders. Some people like to be team players. Some people like to be sources of information. Some people like to be all sorts of, there are nine different roles. I won't go through them all. But again, it's helpful so that you know, um, okay, so this is how I come out when I do this. And that is maybe why. So some people are completer finishers. They're detailed people. They dot I's and they cross T's. Some people are visionaries. You know, they're, oh, I see the future. I'm go I'm going for it. So the people who are detail people often get frustrated with the visionaries because they say, okay, well, it's okay you having that big idea, but, but you know, how? how and tell me how how um, how this is gonna happen and how that is gonna happen and how we'll do this. And so understanding yes. that about other people again helps you to manage your relationship with them and not just to feel like everybody has to be like you, mm-hmm. you know, because I think we all tend to think well maybe it's just me but you know we can tend to think okay this is the way I am so actually this is the way it is everyone Uh, should be actually this is the way I am but I have to learn to acknowledge that other people think very very differently react to things very very differently work very very differently and if I'm going to get on with them I need to understand that a little bit so 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 I think that's the key isn't it? it it's actually understanding that to be able to get on with people to to have yeah. productive relationships mm-hmm. we need to be aware of all of this otherwise it's like okay well another test another test yes. has come yes. up yes yes and it's sort of horses for courses really some things are good now there are lots of really expensive psychometric tests out there there's myers-briggs there's disc there's insights there are all kinds of things some of them work on colors discs and insights work on what colors you are so your yeah. personality is is a uh, it's a baffling array and some of those you need to be a trained psychologist or have a trained psychologist to debrief them yeah Uh, one of the ones that I have found which is actually based on Myers-Briggs I think but it's a free online test and I think it's really really a good one and it's called 16personalities.com and you can uh, go onto their website and take the test for free they will give you a very detailed um analysis of you how you like to do things how that would affect your relationships your personal relationships your working relationships with colleagues with your boss how it would affect you as a leader um if you want to pay more which i never have i think you can find out even more but actually they give you a really really good idea Mm. without you having to pay anything and um and it's done in in a really accessible way also it explains 16 different personality types so that when you read those different types you can probably recognize your brother or your uh, colleague or your you know oh yeah yeah that's how, that's how they are that's how they are so it's really helpful I think and insightful yeah. if you want to understand more about yourself but also about how uh, you can work with others and, and how to understand others better I was just listening actually earlier on to a LinkedIn, something on LinkedIn. There was uh, actually it was Daniel Goldman himself. I just saw it as I was scrolling through. So I I stopped and clicked on it this morning. And he was just talking about how in today's uh, global jobs market, however clever you are, um, your IQ is never going to change. So to be he was talking about software engineers, you have to have an IQ over 115, apparently or 120. That's never going to change. So anyone who's got who's doing those kind of jobs has a high IQ. They they have to in order to do that job. But some people get on better at work than others. Why is that? Mm. And he was saying that the variable is 
emotional intelligence or your EQ and that understanding those things that I said before, self-awareness, yes. self-management, um, being aware of others, empathizing with others and managing your relationship with them. And he was saying that so many studies are showing that people who have a handle on that or have a high, they call it an EQ, emotional quotient, are doing so, so much better in their in their workplaces and in life generally. And mm. the great thing about this is you can never ever change your IQ, you're born with it. Some of us have a higher or a lower IQ than others, uh, but whatever we have, we're stuck with it. We can learn stuff, but we can't change our intelligence quotient. But our emotional quotient, uh, the way he puts it is, is both learned and learnable. Now that That's to me is flexible. very encouraging. Yeah, it's learned and learnable. So that is so encouraging, I think, because no one can say, oh, I'm just no good with people. I just I just can't do that. You know, some people are just, well, some people are born better at that stuff than others, or they've been raised in a house where they've been taught it, more way, likely. Yeah. Um, but we can all learn it. And, and for me, as a, as a trainer and facilitator, that is just so exciting, because otherwise I would feel I was wasting my time. You know, but people <laughs> can learn this stuff and they can change. And, uh, you know, so that to me is so encouraging. And if you're looking to do well in today's uh, working world, in, in whatever industry you're in, working on your intelligence quotient, your emotional quotient emotional. is going to get you much, much further concentrating on those things. You know, who am I and what does that mean for me? And how can I understand other people better? That's what uh, people are looking for in the world today uh, as far as people in their organizations. So would you say then that uh, they go hand in hand in terms of personality types and emotional intelligence that you you really have to be able to do both together or work on both yeah. areas together? Yes, I would say so. Mm. So what the um, 16personalities.com does is tell you all your strengths. And some of those will be in the emotional areas, too. So say you might be an extrovert like you and I. So you like talking to people and you, do, you don't mind going out and, you know, uh, engaging with people. That's a strength. But it can also be a weakness sometimes, too, mm. because sometimes it could be that you don't listen as well as other people if you're if you're always busy uh, being out there. Um, so understanding your strengths and weaknesses, but also understanding other people's. But it gives you some tips then on where your weaknesses are in that area that you can work on. Work on and them. So you yeah. can then think, OK, so I can see if I'm this kind of person and these are my strengths and these are my weaknesses, then it's good to keep on working on my strengths developing my strengths we should never forget that that's key yes it's definitely key um but also we should think about how to work on those weaknesses mm. and even uh, being aware aware of them because sometimes they're yes. blind spots aren't they we we can't yes. really see them but other people no. they, it's kind of like flashing in their face it, it is and that was actually what I was going to say next uh Elizabeth <laughs> it was about there's something called the Joe Harry window I don't know if oh you've yes ever heard of it I have but, yes and that's exactly what I was going to say next, because the Johari window, for those of you who haven't heard of it, is, uh, and the, the only reason it's called that is because two guys called Joe Ingram Joe and, and Harry, Harry left, came up, with, <laughs> came up with the idea sometime It ago. sounds exotic, doesn't it, it Johari? Does, yes. But it's like Joe and Harry. <laughs> Not really, right, just okay. Joe and Harry. They just called it that. Uh, but what they, um, what they uh, said was, we have four quadrants of ourselves. And the first one is what uh, we know about ourselves and other people know about us. So just stuff that's out in the open that we are quite uh, free to share. Um, but the second quadrant is what's really, really interesting. It's what other people know about us that we don't know. So yes. that's exactly what you said. That's the blind spot. So other people mm. see it, but we don't. So I would say that the most powerful tool in personal development as far as your emotional intelligence and these things we're talking about is being open to having feedback from other people. Because if other people can see our blind spots and we can't, then it stands to reason the only way we're going to find them is to allow other people to tell us. And yes. that sometimes is not comfortable. Mm. But the more comfortable we become with it, and actually the more we even welcome it, then the quicker we'll grow our emotional intelligence because we'll be that much more self-aware. Mm -hmm. Because if we go through life thinking, oh, I'm just absolutely wonderful with uh, doing this and everyone else is thinking, really, I'm not so sure about that. Wouldn't you rather they told you that than we're talking about it behind your back, you know? Yes, and so it's, 
it, it's just a way that we can develop when we listen. And really, that's what the whole appraisal system in the workplace is based on, the fact that we need other people to speak into what we're doing as well as ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's quite key because now people are in a place in life, some people have lost their jobs. Yes. And have lost work, something that they, they do, you know, they've been doing for however many years. They've now Absolutely. been pulled out of that situation. Yeah. And a lot of people will be thrown in in the next few months mm -hmm. into different environments, different work colleagues. And all these things will have to be relearned or not even relearned, but mm -hmm. they'll be in a different situation. Whereas before they could be quite comfortable with their work colleagues. They kind of know how to read them and understand yes. them. And yes. all of a sudden, and, and, and even sometimes in those old situations, people are, are, are a bit more forgiving. They kind of let them get away with some of their personality traits. Yes. But in new yeah. situations, you know, as a new person in an organization, all of that comes to light. You have it to does. maneuver and work your way around you the, the work yeah. situation. And this sort of thing, what you yeah. do and how you train people, I think is really key at this point mm -hmm. in time. Definitely. And even that is a good thing to understand, because that made me think about a theory by somebody called Bruce Tuckman, who said that teams go through various stages of development. So exactly as you said, when you're in a new environment, you don't know anybody and people are just working together for the first time. And actually, I think the beginning of this lockdown was very much like that um, with all the Zoom meetings. Even though you know people, it's a different it's a whole different dynamic. And it takes yes. people a while to get used to the norms. So what's OK to say? What's okay to wear how could how do we do this how do we do that what's protocols what's protocols norms yeah. whatever you want to call them um so at first bruce tuckman said and these all rhyme so it's easy to remember he said <laughs> that a team is forming so they're just forming and everybody's kind of walking on eggshells they don't want to rock the boat they want to make sure they fit in they want to find out how things are so it just kind of you know everyone's holding back a little bit but after a while they get to know each other a little bit too well and they start to get wound up by how so-and-so does this or doesn't wash up the teacups or, um, you know, leaves their work till the last minute so that it holds them up or, you know, these little, little things begin to build up. And then he said, almost every team goes through a stage called storming, which is where there may not be outright conflict, but there's kind of an atmosphere or a little bit of a, you know, stuff going on this is very comforting for people to know if you're in that situation at the moment because it's a stage almost all groups go through but you can come through so it's exactly. not a matter of at that point thinking i quit i i can't deal with this because yeah. if it if it's handled right you will come through it and the next stage is norming where people do establish yeah. okay so what we're going to do is agree on so it's okay to clarify our roles to build established norms so that we know who does what and we're all comfortable with that and we bring things out into the open and talk about them and then that's called norming and then eventually you get to the last stage which is performing which is we're on a roll and everything is absolutely fantastic now Sink. we're the dream team but then yes. it only takes one person to join the team to go right back to the beginning <laughs> again so <laughs> but again all of this has to do with the same things really it's the emotional intelligence being able to see that and not get bent out of shape by uh, situations happening but being able to just adapt because you can say to yourself okay that self-awareness is okay so why am I acting like this now okay I can see that it's because of this so this is yes. what I have to do to manage it so what would you say then um, are the the key ways in which a person can apply this in their day-to-day -day life. So once I sort of know what my personality type is, mm -hmm. and I've said, okay, you know, I'm whatever code or whatever number they give it or whatever color they give it. Yeah. Um, well, how, how would you say that a person would approach this in a workplace? Um, ideally with colleagues, I think these days too, a lot of workplaces are very open to a team process, to, to teams getting together and working well together. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned the uh, tool Belbin. That's a really good one to take with your team. And it can be a team building thing in itself because you all find out what you are and then you can all talk about that. OK, so um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to recognize that when I get annoyed with you for dotting I's and crossing T's, that, that really 
I need to recognize that your role is just as important on the team as my role and that actually we can all be different and that be okay and Mm -hmm. so it's understanding where you fit and that's why that forming and storming takes a little while because everyone it takes all that a bit of that to to find out okay so where do I fit and what is my role and how am I going to to do that and and in discussions with uh, your colleagues that can really um, bring that out also these days in so many workplaces and if you're a manager I would recommend you do this if you don't already there are regular one-to-one so that people can actually talk about all this stuff which again 10 years ago I think never used to happen but I think there is a realization that actually these things are really really important and that it really matters that people are aware of how they impact other people and are aware of how they work with other people. And so that atmosphere or attitude of continuous improvement isn't just about the work that gets done, but it's about the way we do the work as well, so that we work better together and more productively together if we can. Definitely. And also acknowledging the individual that does the work. You yeah, know, so absolutely. it's putting putting a person, a human being, someone with yes. a personality, someone who would yeah. react differently to somebody to else. You. Yes. Yeah, to you in, in the picture rather than it's yeah. a task. A task driven yeah. thing kind of allows it to be, well, absolutely. why isn't it done? Whereas yes. when you put a face behind it, it's like, ah, okay. Yeah. Maybe we can move things around, maybe we can adjust the roles a little bit to fit each person's strength. Yeah. No, that actually question... reminds me, sorry, go oh god go ahead i'm just gonna say that actually reminds me of something else that um, <laughs> another way of looking at yourself is whether you're team or task oriented so some people are people oriented so um they're mostly driven by making other people happy and not wanting to you know just wanting everyone to get along and all of that which is great um but some people are driven to getting the task done you know and actually if people get in the way sorry about that but actually we got to get this done and it doesn't much matter how you yeah. feel about that so obviously we all want to achieve a balance where we care about people but also about the task but I think realizing which how far you are on that spectrum either way can help you to to be able to pull back uh to the middle you know because if people are too people oriented then things don't get done but if people are too task oriented then the people they need to get things done um are alienated from them and uh they've shot themselves in the foot so they're disengaged and not working together effectively yeah um now i don't know what your opinion is of this but you've trained i don't know how if you keep count of how many people you've trained i know you've spoken at at, at events where you've spoken to hundreds of people so um do you find that in situations where you're talking about personal personality types maybe people do tests do you find that there are people or, or how do you address it when people have done a test they identify as something based on the test mm. but they don't recognize that reality within themselves how do you balance those yeah um, that kind of I would, situation i would say that would be a situation where coaching would be a good idea which is more sort of one-to-one or having a mentor and i know your guest i'm sorry i don't remember his name a couple of weeks ago was talking yeah. about coaching and the grow model which is a very good one um to be talking about with coaching because with coaching you're talking about okay so here you are now um the goal is that you get to this place but first of all you have to understand the current reality and um understanding the current reality back to that johari window thing is something that often other people have to help you to do so to understand the current reality if somebody won't acknowledge uh, or can't acknowledge it sometimes they do need a bit of help perhaps from a coach to see that actually this is how things are and um you know for all of us that takes time uh, i'd like to say i've got there but i certainly know that i haven't and there's several things i need to work on uh, there are some things i think that become ingrained as habits or just the way we were brought up to do things and that that um you know it, it can be can hold us up from making those changes but definitely i think coaching can help if it's an individual that's stuck somewhere uh, coach can definitely help them to get through that Oh, that's great. Um, We've got a comment here. And I know that uh, you have an answer because you mentioned colour profiling as well, which deals with both personal life and Uh work life. But PN says, I find it interesting that my personality or colour changes depending on the situation or team Mm -hmm. or position that I'm working at and changes also depending on whether I'm at work or private in my Mm -hmm. private life. 
Do yeah. you find that to be true based on the, the test? I do that? find it to be true and I do mm. find it to be interesting as well, Pia. And so thank you for that. You sometimes mm. wonder if you're Jekyll and Hyde, don't you? You know, am I really this? Because it's, I think we can all relate to that, that we can act in a very professional and different way um, yes. at work. And if something happens or somebody says something, we can handle it in a much different or better way than we might do at home. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I have the, the complete answer for that. I think that the basic personality remains the same. Mm. But but I do think, and it might be back to that int emotional intelligence, so um, right, our self-awareness yes, and our uh, self-management, I think we can have a better handle on at work, most of us, than we do at home, maybe, with people that we know love us anyway and will forgive us if we, and we won't lose our job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, so, yeah, it is interesting, but I do think mm. we are, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not a psychologist, but if you go deeply into that, we, we are really, aren't we, different people all the time. You know, I'm, mm. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I'm an aunt, I'm a sister, I'm a, you know, and, and just I'm a friend. So, so sometimes you're different in those situations, aren't you, with, with different people? So I guess the basic personality is the same, but different people probably still see a different side of us. Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's it's sort of like wearing the different hats, isn't it? Yes. Like when you're oh, yes. work, you've got your work hat on, yes. you know. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> but, but in um, situations like that as well, uh, it's I, I think part of it, as you said, could be the emotional intelligence part of you are playing that role for a particular person or or for a particular outcome. Yes, or for a particular outcome. So so therefore, you're working with the dynamics that you find yourself. Mm -hmm. to to get the best out of that situation and I don't think particularly that there's anything wrong with that no. I don't think it's a negative thing I just think it's uh, something that you have to do to be able to fit in in that environment without Actually, being yeah. without not yeah. being authentic that's right actually I think it's foundational because mm. I think if we can understand others it does mean that we have to be um, able to um, understand how they're feeling and that doesn't necessarily mean that we sympathize or that we would feel the same ourselves yes you know I mean one thing I think that has become clearer to me this year as I've been teaching a lot of this stuff is that there's a difference between empathy and sympathy mm. you know so sympathy you know we oh we feel bad for somebody and we want to help empathy mm. is you know well I understand how you're feeling I'm not sure I would feel myself in that situation but I can put myself in your place and see why you're feeling that way and therefore I can learn to respond to you or to react to you in that way if that makes sense yeah so yeah. Yeah, on, on whatever situation it might be. Yeah. So since I, I have you here and we can sort of pull lots of things out, out from you, <laughs> we're going to move on to a few things in a minute. But just talking about the, the question that I had, um, I mean, in fact, what, what PN mentioned, mm -hmm. I, I find it very interesting when I'm taking these personality tests because of that exact thing that PN mentioned, mm -hmm. which was they ask a, a question and you're like, yeah. Well, it depends, depends on the situation. I can't say yeah. I agree or I disagree with this because yeah. it totally yeah. depends on the situation. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's why I think sometimes I'm, I mean, they're great, they're useful, but I don't think you should put a, a huge store on them because really I, I've taken that 16 personalities test and I'm, I've almost been all 16 personalities. So, you know, I think, <laughs> I think sometimes it does depend on, but you have to try and be really honest with yourself on what you are most of the time, you know? Yes, so, yeah. Um, but there are some things. Now, when I say all 16, that is an exaggeration. But certainly yeah, there are a right. few that I might uh, sort of cross over between depending on the situation and who I'm with. But there are some that I'm definitely not. So um, yes. I'm never going to be an introvert. I know that. You know, that's just one of those things. So, you know, it's um, some things we know about ourselves and other things are a bit more in a grey area, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, it's interesting because you mentioned when you were talking about introvert and extrovert, you said like you and I, as in... Yeah saying that I'm an, an extrovert but it's quite interesting that I would actually say that I'm an introvert really? okay. or an introverted extrovert well, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think we might have to create a new and I think that's probably yeah. you know it's, it's understanding that it's quite interesting that we all think that we're unique in that sense don't we but yeah. then people fall into patterns and they fall into yeah. brackets that thousands of other people would either yeah. think that way or respond that way. And that's why, you know, we always like to group people, don't we? <laughs> we do. That's right. Um, and we can. And, and, but those patterns you know, have been seen and have been recognized by, by others. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, they have. No, absolutely. And we can only go by the, our, our own evidence. So, you know, from what yeah. I know of you, you are always the first to, um, you know, introduce everybody, make everybody feel comfortable, make sure you speak to everybody, which are from the outside. But no one really knows what goes on inside somebody, do yes, they? Yeah. Um, apart from themselves or unless you know someone really well. And even when you do, um, that uh, there's that one quadrant of the Johari window, which we didn't get to, which were things that we know about ourselves that other people don't, don't know. know. However close we are to, to someone, there, there may always be one or two things that we haven't kind of, yeah, revealed to them. To others. Yeah. I think it's something that it's very key it, to actually discuss and to yeah. be aware of. I think that's the initial step, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Awareness. Yeah. Because yeah. if we don't really know, you know, how we respond or react to things, and people can see that all the time happening within us, yeah. Yeah. then it's hard for us to either maintain that positive behavior mm -hmm. or work on those behaviors that really aren't maybe helping the relationships that we're, we're forming or even ourselves. Yeah. So I, I'm very, very Agreed. keen on like having <laughs> discussions and talking about and talking about things like that. And, yeah. and, you know, like what you said about being the first, you know, me being the first person to speak to someone, I think where that comes from, because I'm quite happy to be sat by myself in the in silence, uh -huh. but I tend I tend to look to see if there are other people that are uncomfortable or yes. need to yes. be brought yes. into the conversation. Yeah, and I'm confident mm -hmm. enough to be able to do that, not because I I feel like I want to, or I, but right. I feel that I actually I want to bring you those can. people in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then and as you say, other people then could see that as being extroverted. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes, no, absolutely. So is that another angle then we need to be aware of at home and at work in terms of what is it that other people see, yes. even if it isn't the, uh, it, their perception of what they see might yeah. be wrong. They might interpret yes. it in a different way. So emotional intelligence would allow us maybe to hear what they're saying and pick up that, oh, they think this. Yes. And then because respond to that. Yes, because it's not just the words someone is saying, it's the meaning behind it as well, which so sometimes um, people do mean exactly what they say, but quite often um, they mean something deeper behind it and it's getting into that. And that's where the um, active listening comes in, isn't it? Because yes. if we're really listening, we sometimes, but we've probably all had that experience where we were talking to somebody, we finished the conversation, we moved away, we moved on. And then perhaps a few minutes later or even later in the day, we think we go back over that conversation and think, you know what, I think they were trying to tell me something and I just didn't pick it pick up. up or it. I just, yeah, and I missed that. I missed that opportunity to, they were trying to say something. And um, yeah, I think that that sort of thing can happen a lot. And I suppose the more, and I think our culture is definitely going that way these days. And even you doing something like this every week, I think the culture is getting so that it's acceptable to talk about these things and be open about all this stuff in a way that maybe it wasn't in the past. And so I think that's helpful because as we hear other people discussing these issues, it becomes okay to talk about it and to talk about it with mm. other Yeah. And to talk about it with other people, you're saying? Definitely, yes. So with each other and with other people, yes. yeah. And absolutely. reflect on, on how that affects you and impacts your life yes. and, and if there's anything you need to do about that. Yeah. Uh, now, we have, you know, these tests and people do these tests and then they say, mm -hmm. I am this yeah. or <laughs> I am that. Yeah. Um, I, and I'm kind of leading you here a little bit. Okay. <laughs> but are there, any, are there any negative, uh, is there any negative impact or are there any negative drawbacks that we need to be aware of when we take the personality test or when we start delving into this topic? Well one of them is I think what I said earlier not to set too much store by it because I think mm. it can depend on how you answer the questions on a given day but also unless you have got a psychologist analyzing it for you it's it's only a you know kind of a, a, a rough idea and it may be very like you uh, but not to get too bent out of shape about it yes. I, I suppose too one of the things that we naturally do especially if it's a weakness that comes out or is being pointed out to us um, is that we either don't want to recognize it so we become defensive and think oh no 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 that's not true that's just you know uh, I'm not going to take that on board or we take it on board and then start to get really upset about it or feel really bad about ourselves because of it and neither of those are particularly helpful or productive so um sorry, sorry go I ahead we can still hear you 
we have a huge train just gone by the <laughs> outside my window so I hope you couldn't hear it but I couldn't even hear myself speak then so <laughs> apologies for that that's okay um, but so yeah um not to get too worked up about the weaknesses but to look at it almost like a problem solving thing okay so mm. so this is what I need to work on how can I do that and uh, yeah. as I said before you could do that by working with a coach or you could do that I mean there's so much stuff out there now to help you whether it's going on courses with other people or whether it's online um, you know workbooks or or different things that you can find or just talking to a good friend or your um, husband or wife or whoever um, you know, there are lots of different ways to do it. But I guess the main thing is to do something. If you identify something that you really feel, OK, I acknowledge that this is a weakness that I've been I've had perhaps all my life and it, it may be holding me back. Mm. Then it's OK. So what am I going to do about it rather than, oh, no, that's just who I am. There's nothing I can do. So, yes. Yeah. So that's really great to hear that, you know, so. we've been talking about these different personalities, mm -hmm. but it is possible to, um, I wouldn't necessarily use the hard word of change, but it's possible to be aware of it yeah. and then work on that particular mm -hmm. area. Because you might always feel that way. You might always yeah. feel, I don't know, like you're not comfortable in big spaces with lots of people. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then if you're aware of that and if you are aware that it has maybe a negative impact on your life, mm -hmm. then you can take steps to do something about it. Absolutely. It's like I said before, it's it's working on your strengths, but your weaknesses. But the more you turn your weaknesses into strengths, you're still the same personality, but you're doing something about those weaknesses to make them into strengths. So if you don't know what your weaknesses are in the first place, then it's hard to work on them. But if you know, then you, you can. So can you give us an example then of how someone can turn their weakness into a strength? And uh, the reason I'm, I'm just sort of smiling and giggling to myself is because, you know, you just have this picture of um, a manager and the manager asks the person, you know, so tell me, what are your weaknesses? And oh, then everything yeah. that they list is like strength, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm yes. too productive. I'm, you know, I'm overly efficient. <laughs> like, and you're like, yeah mm, okay <laughs> perhaps I could just put on record that that is the very worst interview question ever because what are people gonna say you know <laughs> it's like yeah, you know, you're not, yeah right. don't ever put anyone in that position <laughs> but yes once you've acknowledged a weakness so I don't know what let's take um do you want to pick a weakness and we'll see what we can do or I'll try and think of one mm. uh, so if somebody for example if their their weakness is um that they're inverted commas because it's other people's perceptions they're too quiet at work they don't okay. voice their opinion okay so uh, and that's actually a very common one i would say and that's a common one that comes up at people's appraisals and it's a common one that people try and address themselves mm -hmm. um and in my experience for that particular one one thing that people really realize that they need to do is to learn how to be more assertive and so assertiveness you can learn to be assertive so by nature we're on a spectrum somewhere between very passive and very aggressive by nature and by our upbringing assertiveness is somewhere in the middle and it's a learned behavior so people aren't born assertive they learn it uh, hopefully they learn it at home or they learn it at school but otherwise they need to learn it in life and so yeah. it's pulling back for those people who are more aggressive when to keep their mouths shut and how to say things in a way that doesn't trample on other people but for those who are more passive it's learning that it's okay to speak up and um, that you can do that and be heard and that your opinion is just as valuable as other people's and so we all pretty much have to learn how to get to that middle ground some people more than others but certainly for for those who ha who find it and I, I, I deal with a, an organization that um, a lot that has a lot of very very um, high level academics and and deals with some you know a lot of people and uh, uh, some more junior members of that organization will get in meetings and feel very uncomfortable in speaking up mm. even though they know that they have the expertise and even though it turns out later that they were correct in what they were thinking yes. um, and certainly I've known quite a few of them over the last couple of years are actively training themselves to be a bit more assertive and to work on that so if we're doing assertiveness training which is something I do quite a bit really 
you would be you know sort of looking at scenarios really where you can practice how to do that a little framework on how to be more assertive so that you can oh. you know structure a conversation and not feel at a disadvantage and on the reverse side if you're more aggressive can learn how to say something to somebody without making them feel defensive or accused so it's a matter of learning how to be on that middle ground yeah. Yeah. and that's something I know you have inspire away and you yeah. you you teach people this that you know you teach people how to do these things it seems like you're a very hands-on and practical trainer which is the, the <laughs> what brings music to my ears you know rather than it's just a screen and a book yeah. and that's oh, it but it's more of how can we role play yeah. this how can yeah. we practice it I mean, if this yeah. was in real life how would you do it because it's then it's personalized isn't it exactly. is it isn't here's exactly. the one size fits all no because one size doesn't fit all and actually I would say I'm as much a facilitator as I am a trainer because if you've got a group of people whether they're online or whether they're in a room they all have something to contribute and actually it's pulling that out of the different people and helping everyone to go away feeling like they've both contributed and learned something that is what's really important to me and so um, yeah definitely that's that's how I would see training or workshops I, I prefer to call them because I, I think it isn't just me telling you things hopefully you benefit from some of the stuff I've learned but it is the learning from each other it's the it's the you know okay so let's hear a situation you have and let's see how we could apply what we're learning to that today together as a group that helps people to learn um, yeah keeps them engaged as well so I guess that makes life a bit more um, have a bit more variety for you I know in your Definitely. write up you you don't you're, you said that you're not a, you're a person that likes doesn't like routine doesn't like having to do no and you think as a trainer that actually you're doing the same thing over and over again no no training. I think I'm up to about 30 different subjects that I teach this particular organization in the course of a year different and several different times but then also if you even if you're teaching the same course so for instance if I'm doing I, management and leadership I've done probably more than anything and when I say lots of subjects you can break management and leadership down into loads of different subjects so it's not you know just a topic but um what I would say is that even if you were teaching exactly the same material with a different group because I'm not just talking all the time it's interactive it's different every single time and there yes. are different outcomes and people go away with different things and I learn something every time from the people who come on my courses because you know they're telling me how things are in their workplace or a situation that they've encountered and so I'm learning and hopefully they're learning and from me as well as from each other so so no it's it's never uh, the same every day um, and actually before we were locked down I was usually going somewhere different every day as well so uh, less that now <laughs> so, so a different more... environment as well even if it's just visually yes absolutely yeah, yeah. and do you um, do you use then some of those because I'm guessing if you've got a variety of people that come into the room you're you're picking up as well some of their stories that you absolutely. could then use in the All next the time. All session the time. that, that I have this to is be real careful. this has actually happened <laughs> Yes. I, oh, yes. Because I think if you can, if you can give examples of things that actually happened, mm. then um, yeah, it, it's really important, isn't it, to, to do to do that? Yeah. So um, always give loads of examples on my courses. You were mentioning before about the British Airways thing, so maybe ah, I yes. quickly yeah. say about before, that. Now. Before before we go into that, because <laughs> that's quite interesting. But what I want to find out for the viewers as well is because we've talked about the personality type, uh, types and emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. How easy is it? Because I know you can go on courses and things like that. But how easy is it to understand and to apply? The principles of emotional intelligence? I think it's very easy if you're willing to, to try it and willing to do it. I think sometimes um, the old IQ or, or intelligence can get in the way sometimes mm. or also that voice inside ourselves which says oh no I'll never change I can never change and I suppose that's where um, you have to believe first of all that it is possible to change. Yes. Um, you know to, to to start with that really because then uh, I think you can in little steps I'm not saying you, you'll change overnight and as we've already said it's not changing your personality it's just working on your weaknesses so that they can become strengths and um, you know another tool that's a very simple one that I'm sure lots of people are familiar with is just doing a, a SWOT analysis looking at mm. your strengths your weaknesses what opportunities you have and what threats you have 
um, you know, and sort of thinking, okay, and this is what I need to work on. This is a threat to me. If I don't work on this weakness, it actually is going to be a threat to my career or a threat to my progress. And so, you know, there are these opportunities out there, but actually I need to work on these weaknesses. um, Otherwise they become a threat. And sometimes when we can see it like that, it's easier to do it. So I'm not saying it's, it's very easy, but it definitely depends on your motivation to do it. And, mm. you know, I think sometimes if you know, say, your future prospects depend on it or something you really want to do depends on it, then that gives you the motivation to be able to, to do, do it. That. And motivation is a whole other subject. I won't start that now. But <laughs> oh, of, it's like we've covered a fascinating uh, subject. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've co- covered an array of things, active <laughs> listening. Yes, we've I covered, know. you know, all the different types of theories in terms of personality, <laughs> emotional intelligence. It's all intertwined, isn't it? Because it is. You have oh, it really is. Communication. Yes, communication, all of it. It is, mm. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is why I prefer not to just do one thing because it, it really does just all interlock. Yeah. Interlock. Uh, so moving on to being able to acknowledge and, and having that atmosphere or that environment around you, whether in your workplace or whether in your personal life, that it's OK to fail. And yeah. it's and by recognizing that we, you know, uh, maybe come fallen short on something. Mm-hmm. That's the only way that we can say there's a different benchmark. Let's try and improve it. Yeah. And turning it from being a negative and or something to be ashamed of to be something that's oh, this is another learning opportunity, everyone. Yes. Look, I did this. Absolutely. It didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, have Absolutely. a look. How can we all work together to make it work? So can you give us that mm. British Airways example and just oh, sort of give okay. us a framework with Yeah, it? that's an interesting one because it is about how people work together and how we mm. can tend to be sometimes a little bit too respectful of authority. Oh. Um, because what happened, and I know your guest last week was talking about yes, that the yes. culture, the, the culture everywhere really that can be hierarchical so that if mm. you've got a, a more important job than me, that means you're more important than me. And it means that I don't have a say or I shouldn't speak up. So this was from a, a program I heard on Radio 4 and it actually um, is where the um, term no blame culture came in, mm. which I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard of before because they were analyzing a lot of um, air crashes airline disasters um, because obviously they have to go back and say why did this happen and um, actually there's some audio footage we haven't time to to, uh, listen to now but it's um, really scary that they analyzed this one time where a plane crashed and the pilot uh, saw that an engine was on fire and he closed down the wrong engine He closed down the engine that was working, working. not the one that was on fire. The passengers could see that because he announced that he was closing the left engine and they could see it was the right engine that was on fire or it might have been the other way around. But anyway, the wrong. Yeah. The the, uh, cabin crew could see that he'd, he'd done the wrong thing, but none of them said anything. They all thought he's the pilot he knows what he must be right i cannot question that i am not important enough to question what he's doing and the plane did crash thankfully there weren't any casualties they managed to to do a crash landing but when they went back and looked at it 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 could have been easily avoided if the cabin crew had said are you sure are you sure it's the right engine shouldn't it be the left and um they began to look at how often this happened and it happens as well the nhs started to look at this and how, how often it happened too that people don't like to question what surgeons are doing either because they're so important and uh, i won't tell you some of the catastrophes that have happened as as a result but uh, both organized that both the airline industry and the health industry started to realize that actually we need to give people permission to speak up when things are going wrong however important the person is who's making the mistake. It's not a matter of pointing a finger or having a witch hunt, but it's a matter of this is a mistake and we need to do something about it. We need to put it right. And so that's where the whole no blame culture comes from. Not that it's okay to make mistakes and just carry on doing it, but that actually if you make a mistake, yeah, you need to perhaps need to accept the consequences for that and you certainly need to put it right. But first of all, everybody needs to get on board and just put that right. Yes. 
And if people feel that learn they can from it. Yeah, learn from it. And so if people feel yes. they can speak up and say, you know what, I made a mistake with those figures. And so it's, uh, you know, rather than fudge it and think, oh, they'll never know, I, you know, to say that so that, you know, and, and actually, after a while, that doesn't make people think, oh, that person's always making mistakes. It makes people feel, you know, I can trust that person, because I know when they do make a mistake, they're going to say so. And so yeah. it's almost the opposite of what we would think. We build trust and loyalty by being more open and honest about mm. our mistakes and when things don't go well, rather than we think, you know, that thing inside us says, oh, I better hide that because otherwise people will think I'm no good. You know, it actually is the opposite. But sometimes we need to convince ourselves of that. And I think that kindly rounds us off because we've only got a few minutes left. And I do want to talk about Inspire Away. Um, you know, that it kind of highlights or links to ourselves as well in terms of our personality types, yeah. being happy to learn from our weaknesses mm -hmm. and try to find ways to improve them and to also allow other people the permission, give people the permission mm -hmm. to highlight them to us without getting yeah. defensive. Because the natural thing, I mean, to be honest, the natural thing yeah. for people initially internally <laughs> is to cool. feel oh really you know but if yeah. you kind of have that mental attitude that this is going to help me not harm me yeah. Yeah. um yeah. then it kind of changes the perspective it does so can i just say one more thing on that yes it was, i had a young lady in a course uh, just before the lockdown who said she was so disappointed in her appraisal and i was thinking she was going to say she had a rubbish appraisal what she said was they couldn't answer my questions of what i could improve on oh <laughs> and she genuinely wanted to know her weaknesses and her boss hadn't hadn't told her thought and i just that. thought Wow, yeah, that's a mature attitude. <laughs> yeah. So let's go on to uh, Inspire Away. So this is yeah. your company and you do this for um, a living. You're, you've been, you know, you, you've been doing this for quite a long time. Yeah. I can see now in the way that things have changed, yes. you have some online courses that anybody can take I part in. I have. What was the inspiration for choosing these particular courses because i can see you've got building resilience mm -hmm. you've got assertiveness assertiveness we spoke on it seems like yeah. that's a common issue um problem solving and decision making and you've got the leadership management course yes and um, before i let you answer that question because we've only got a few minutes left just to let everybody in the audience know um sharon firth has kindly given the viewers of let's meet a 20 percent discount um, so if you get in touch with them, send them an email, the email address is there on the site and just let them know that you saw this on Let's Meet or you were referred by Let's Meet, you'll get 20% off the prices. Although at these prices, I think they're very, very competitive. Yes. Well, I, I want to make it accessible to people anywhere in the world. And for a long time, I've wanted to do this. Um, and there hasn't really been a platform where I found that I could really work with people all over the world. Uh, but yes. since this lockdown started, I've become the Zoom queen. And I'm, I've been <laughs> carrying on training programs with some of my clients and doing workshops. And I just suddenly thought, you know what, now's the time. Um, I'm... I, I would love to work with people from all over the world and I do not want price to be a barrier uh, mm. for doing that because I love to share knowledge and I love people to be able to share together. And especially for the leadership and management course, what my vision is, is for people to become a peer group where they're really getting to know each other and helping each other and helping each other develop and uh, you know work because I've seen this happen so often in the room uh, over the 20 years or more I've been training and I would love to see this happen with a global online group yeah and i can see that the the class sizes or the participant yeah, sizes are, are manageable yes. yeah they're, they're not more yeah. there won't be more than 10 so i think yeah. that's realistic in terms of being able uh -huh. to Yes. interact with other people and Absolutely. really learn from people rather than you know yeah. sometimes in some zoom meetings you've got 100 100 no, people no i don't want you know, it to be a lecture i want it to yeah. be that people can and i'll split people into groups we'll do exercises you know we'll ha have little video stuff there'll be uh, it'll be very interactive and very varied and um yeah i think i think people will really enjoy it i chose the building resilience first because i think in this pandemic this is what we all need mm -hmm. and it's a subject that I've become much more familiar with over the last year or so in teaching it and I think it's something that's really helpful to people in turning negative thinking around to wow. positive so well we didn't get to talk about your work as a co-pastor which would have been also quite yeah. great because we're talking <laughs> about the young people as well and helping mm -hmm. to forge minds and to create yeah. positive people you know that are able to recognize who they are and the value mm -hmm. that they have 
to add to society mm -hmm. and really kind of I would you say that it's more of a like a coaching role or like a mentorship role yeah that that's really I mean at the moment we're doing a youth group online and it's very much like other workshops that I would do you know it's it's interactive we're letting letting them talk and and uh, you know having some teaching but having them sort of come back and, and playing games and doing different things like that too but yeah just getting some right principles in their minds and hearts early on in life because yeah. I know that was done with me and I'm very grateful that it was I think when you can learn things when you're young you can learn things when you're old and I hope I'm still learning but you know it is easier definitely to change your ways when you're younger yeah that's that's very true well, thank you very much for that work as well and um, yeah. I think it's really great that you're willing to share your experiences not only in the workplace in your business but mm -hmm. also in society and community because as we know you know it's the individuals in society that make the whole society yeah, um, and getting getting that right as well whether it's in the work situation helping people to find out who they are and work better with each other or yeah. whether it's in the community side of mm -hmm. things that's some um, very valuable work so thank you very much well thank you very much for joining us um today and just to let people know um the website is inspireaway dot co dot uk and you can go on there click on any of those links you can do the course and you can get the 20 percent discount as well if you just mentioned that you watched or you came through let's meet we'd like to say thank you very much to sharon fur thank you for taking the time um, to do this i know you're the zoom queen but you've also had to yeah. learn a different platform yeah. as well so have, yes <laughs> that's quite good to <laughs> be you versatile thank you for asking me it's been no, great that's okay um it's great to just have knowledgeable people that are able to come in and share their experiences to help every one of us really mm -hmm. walk forward in our personal development journey and that's the aim but that's thank you very much about. everyone and just mm -hmm. before we go uh can you just give us your three takeaways in 30 seconds Sharon? Oh, for me? Um, yes, if you could just summarize your three things that people should take away if, and remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, to work on your strengths as well as your weaknesses. Yep. Uh, to uh, look up emotional intelligence and, and think a little bit more about how you can become more self-aware, manage yourself better, more aware of other people and manage your relationships better. And um, yeah, look at problem solving in a different way and try and be a little more logical before you make a decision. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for coming Thank in you. today. Don't forget to continue to share this stream out so that other people can learn and develop and be able to take something away from it as well. And I will see you next week when we'll have Miles Pilling. He'll be talking about assistive technology and the th some things that we'll be able to learn in that session there as well. So take care for now. All the best. See you next time.